I'd like to show you how to create a new data table from scratch. Somebody at some point will have had to have done this for all the tables. Oh, there are other ways to get them in, like you can read in comma, delimited, or text files, or you can import Excel files. But many tables are entered just by typing them. So I have soils data here, and I have the soils data information in the table here. You notice that they're polygon data. There's an FID or a, a standard ID for each one of the rows which correspond to a polygon in an area and a perimeter and then these other soil variables so there's soil utm underscore utm id underscore and then soil type we're going to create a table that will use soil type as a key to join in to this set of features that contain additional information and the soils data and a lot of other data are like this there's a base table with a type or a key and then lots of other tables that join into the key for various attributes you might be interested in so a farmer would be interested in one set an engineer another a conservationist another and so we build these separate tables and tie them in we can look at the values here the form because we need to understand that before we're going to create a join item in our new table. It has to be of the same type as the variable we're going to use to join. So we'll have to make a long variable and put the same values in it as are here so that they can match across in the join as we've discussed in the lectures and in the book. So I create a new data table by clicking new in the database that I'm working in and table and it creates a new table um, by giving it a table name and location. I'll stick with the location that I'm at. I'll do soil props for the name. I'm not going to use a template or configuration keyword and run and it creates the table. So my new soil props table is there. It shows up and if I look at that soil props table by opening it and uh, looking at it both in the row key, there's no rows in the standard view or in the fields view, I see that it only has one variable an object ID variable. Now, I give you a set of variables to add. The first one you're going to add is this soil type. This is what we're going to use to link. Now, I don't have to give it the same name as the key in my target table, but I do here, and conveniently it comes as a long. Uh, now, I can go here to the next one. I think I tell you to give it a name, and I want that to be a text type, and I want to make sure that it's only uh, 10 or so characters long so that I don't uh, have this huge long text table. Now, the next one I think is we have you do a FERT class, and then we also have you do a drainage class. And we change the values for all of these. Uh, I think I ask you to make them doubles. Now, once we're done, we have to go ahead and save that to make sure we have our new blank template set. And I can go back and look at that, and sure enough, there it is with the soil type, the name, fur class instead of fur class. I can't rename it. I'd have to delete this and add it again if I wanted to change the name to fur class, but this is fine. The name really doesn't matter. So once I've created my empty table, I need to populate it with values. And so if I just display the table here, I see that there are no rows associated with it. I'll go ahead and click here where it says click to add a new row and enter the soil type. Now my first one is this soil type of 18, and then I'll click into the next uh, column and I enter the name, which is Eve for the first one, and then the fertility class of four, and the drainage class of 90. So I'm done then, and if I hit return, it creates that row and gives me the option to click to add a new row. And so the next one is 19, and then it's a Cecil, and uh, oops, help if I could type, right? And a fertility class of three, and a drainage class of 40. And I go on down the rows until I get to my last one. Now I'm going to stop here rather than have you watch through all of them. But um, So I entered these two values here. Um, when I'm done, I go and save. And it asks if I want to save the edits. So you'll enter all your values and then save them in a file that's named soil props and you'll use this soil type 
to connect to the existing soil type here in your soil's data layer. 